Okay, so let's proceed with our next topic, uh, topic 10 on slip slots and registers. So what we have seen uh, previously, uh, mainly we have looked at combinational logic, uh, medium scale integrated circuits combinational logic, where the output depends solely on the present input. And it has no memory, uh, means that uh, whatever input output that we uh, get, it will be lost uh, since we are not storing the results anywhere so it has no memory uh, in contrast what we are going to cover this week and also next week is something called the sequential logic whereby the output depends not only on the present input but also on the past history of inputs and it has memory so meaning that the output or even the input we can store it and do some processing later on uh, and in this class uh, there, there are two types of sequential logic. There's something called a synchronous sequential logic and the asynchronous. Uh, the asynchronous doesn't use a clock, uh, whereas the synchronous uses uh, something called a clock signal to regulate the operations, and it is therefore simpler to design. And in this class, we are going to mainly cover. Uh, this class will cover only um, uh, covers uh, uh, only the synchronous logic so uh, the asynchronous logic we will not cover uh, in this uh, in this course okay so uh, let's look at the basic memory element or memory a circuit with the memory so we can see here the simple example of a back-to-back -back inverter or a buffer uh, any circuit stable in 0 or 1 has memory value doesn't change by itself okay. so this is called the cascaded inverters where for example if we have a 0 here a logic 0 there, uh, the output of the first inverter will be logic 1 and the output of the second inverter will invert the first one, we get logic 0 and we can see that it's going to feed back. So what, what we see here is that um, uh, the value of 0, uh, the value of 0 will just keep on uh, repeating itself uh, all the way. Okay, so 0, 1, 0, 1, uh, all the way and, and this value of 0 and 1 in the middle there will always be there as long as uh, we have we supply power okay uh, supply power so we supply power to uh, these two devices so as long as we still have the power on the devices therefore your bits of zero and one will always be in the loop or in the circuit so that's a basic idea uh, of of sequential circuits where we have a, something called a feedback okay so here is called the feedback so when we have the feedback we can actually keep the value and it will not be lost as long as we supply power. So let's look at the first practical example of a sequential circuit. The first one we're going to look at is something called the SR latch. So here is the logic symbol of the SR latch. It contains two inputs, S and R, and two outputs, Q and Q bar. And Q bar, notice here we have a bubble there. And here is a gate level schematic on how to construct uh, the block, the SR block. Uh, the S goes down here, the R goes up here. Um, so uh, we have the Q and the Q bar. So we can see here that this is the characteristic table. So here is our characteristic table. So we can see what's going on. Uh, for example, let's have a look at the first uh, example of uh, the first analysis. Uh, in the case when we have S0 and R0. So if you put 0, 0 there, what we are going to get is uh, over here, this is Q feedback. So here is going to be Q. Here is Q bar feedback. And we know that for a, a NOR gate, Q is equal to R plus Q bar bar. Okay, uh, so if, if R is 0, then this is going to be Q bar bar, which is going to be equals to Q. So Q is actually equals to Q. So we can do a similar analysis down here and find that actually when our R is 0 and our S is 0, then we have actually no change in the output Q. Okay, so essentially what you're going to say is um, when we provide 0, 0 on R and S, Q maintain. Okay, maintain the value. Q bar will maintain the value. So for example, if Q is 0, it will maintain 0 and therefore Q bar equals 1, it will maintain logic 1. Let's look at the second case whereby we have S is equals to 0 and uh, R is equals to uh, R is equals to 1 
and s is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, in the case that the s is equal to zero, okay, so we know that this is q. Uh, so here is zero plus q bar bar, which is equal to q bar. Okay, so um, so this is equals to uh, q bar. Uh, uh, how, however, in fact, we should we should analyze the top one first. So if we analyze this one, um, we're going to supply one to r. So one plus q bar bar. Okay, one plus but here we have a q bar. So so r r here is equals to one. Okay, so uh, one plus q bar bar is is in fact equals to zero. Okay, because here it's actually equals to one bar. So Q is in fact equals to zero. Okay, and that's why we have here that when we supply R equals to one, we have Q will be equals to zero. Now what happened to Q bar? So Q bar, so if if uh, if Q is zero, then we have zero plus zero bar, which is equals to one. And that is why our Q bar is equals to one. Okay, so uh, we can we can make the analysis, or we can just look at the characteristic table and see that if we supply one zero, so s equals to one and r equals to zero, we are going to get uh, this is a set, so a one here and a zero there. Okay, and and these values will always maintain. Okay, uh, as long as uh, we supply r and s correctly, it's going to maintain one and zero. And finally, if we supply one one. Okay, you can see that it's actually forbidden because now we have Q equals to zero and Q bar is equal to zero, which is not possible because if Q is zero, then Q bar should be equal to one. But in this case, uh, Q zero and Q bar is equal to zero. Okay, um, so, so if you want to analyze this, we can see that uh, here, one plus Q bar is in fact equal to zero. And here is also 1 plus q bar bar is also equals to 0. Okay, so that is uh, basically what happened to the SR latch, the basic uh, memory element in digital electronics, uh, where we have the SR latch given, well, or whatever input we put, we get a certain output uh, based on the condi condition of the set and the reset. Okay, let's expand a little bit more. So, um, uh, so let's expand a bit more here. So if we expand this, uh, we can in fact have something called the enable signal. So, in, so in, uh, in addition to SR, we have the enable. And we have two circuit implementation here. This one is a NAND based, okay? Uh, NAND based uh, gated SR, okay? And here is our, our NOR based, okay? Here is a NOR based. Uh, not not a NAND, but uh, you can call it a NOR based gated SR. Okay, uh, both both giving the same function, so we can analyze this. Uh, we can analyze the, the enable signal. So what happen if, for example, here we give a zero on the enable? Okay, so if you give a zero here, this is an AND gate. Okay, these are AND gates. Therefore, here both are going to be zero. So remember that if we supply a zero and zero we are going to have a no change okay so here we'll maintain so essentially what we are saying that if enable zero i.e we are disabling okay so if we are disabled then the q will maintain the previous value it's not going to get updated to a new value uh, now what happened when enable equals to one so we can see that when enable equals to one okay so we have a one there and a one there and here is going to be R and here is going to be S based on our Boolean algebra. Okay, so R dot one is R, S dot one is equals to S, and here is in fact exactly the same characteristic as what we have in this table here. Okay, depending on the SR value, we are going to set our Q, maintain our Q, or we can also be in a forbidden state. Okay, so uh, let's have a look here to understand more. Let's have a look at the timing diagram here. Uh, the functional simulation or the timing waveform for the gated SR latch. Okay, so here is our characteristic table. Characteristic table. Okay, and um, we know that when enable is zero, 
okay when enable is zero um, we have a no change on our output queue s is x r is x so for example here our queue is initially zero is going to be maintained zero all the way and don't care here okay so we don't care the value of sr because enable is zero now in this condition we have now at this time we have enable equals to one now when enable equals to one we have to look at what are the values of sr during enable equals to one so uh, during this time we see that the s is actually equals to one and during this time s is zero uh, during this whole time we have zero zero okay so um when s is one r is zero you see the table here uh, s is one r is zero we see q plus okay our next value of q which is going to be one so that's why is is becoming one right there okay and then we have zero zero q so it maintains the previous value so what is the previous value at this point so at this point the previous value is actually one and we have a zero zero is asking to maintain the previous value which is one so now it's going to just keep one up to this point and here we have enable zero enable zero no change q so it's going to maintain going to maintain now we have enable one and we're going to see that here is zero this is one here is zero zero so what happened when uh, zero zero is going to maintain what happened when s is equals to one is going to be equals to one so it's going to maintain maintain okay and let's have a look at the last part here whereby in this condition we have zero zero one one so here is actually a reset so we can see a reset here in this condition where r is equals to one and s is equals to zero and in this case we have the output going down to logic zero okay So uh, we can expand more on the basic concept of the SR latch to obtain the D latch. Okay, so here is a NAND based. Uh, in fact, both are the NAND based. This is a without inverter. So here is a, a version without inverter. It's more optimized, less logic gates, um, but it's the same function. Uh, it's a it's a D latch. So what what is a D latch doing? So a D latch is basically uh, previously we have the the SR. Okay, so if you if you recall here we have the the r the uh, the sr okay the sr like this and we're just going to combine them together okay so previously we used to have sr here so we're going to combine the sr together and put the inverter and what happened here is the input sr will never be the same okay so for example if we supply zero on the d here is zero and here we are going to get one okay they are not going to be the same uh, if we supply a 1 here, okay, we are going to get a 0 and see it's not going to be the same. Uh, so therefore, we can avoid the forbidden condition whereby uh, both uh, um, these uh, parts here are going to be the same. Okay, so uh, and, and, and also we can have uh, uh, enable function as well, okay, similar to the gated SR. Okay, so so what happened in the D? We can we can see that uh, in in the in the D uh, latch, basically we can say that if enable, okay, uh, if it's enable, then um, Q Q is in fact equals to D. Okay, else Q will maintain uh, Q. So in in terms of programming, we can see that actually um, what happened to the output Q. Is in fact depending on the value of d at the condition that our enable equals to one. So, for example, if you have a one here, uh, so so here here both here is going to be zero, okay? Uh, both they're going to be zero, and uh, the the condition if it's a, a zero here is going to be. Um, Okay, so the, the condition here, if, if enable equals to 1, um, um, and, and therefore, uh, here is going to be 1 dot d uh, bar, which is in fact equals to d bar. Okay, so here is in fact your d bar, and down here is going to be um, 1 dot uh, d bar bar, which is going to be equals to d. So here is in fact equals to d. Okay, so um, what is going to happen is... Uh, 
uh, here here we have the D and here we have the Q so Q dot D bar so in fact here is going to be equals to D you can do the analysis and here is going to be D bar okay so therefore when enable equals to 1 we can say that Q is in fact is taking your uh, original D value okay uh, so if D is 0 then Q is 0 if D is 1 then Q is 1 now what happens when enable equals to 0 so we can do the same analysis Okay, you can do say the same analysis when when enable is uh, uh, zero. Okay, so so z so here is a d here is a uh, sorry so here is a d bar. So here is zero dot d bar which is going to be equals to one. Okay, so here is going to be equals to one. Here is also going to be equals to one because zero dot d bar bar is also equals to one. Okay, so if if, if in the case of both equals to one, uh, here is going to maintain. Okay, so essentially Q equals to Q, Q bar equals to Q bar. It's going to maintain. So that's why here we have uh, the D latch. Uh, simply that if enable equals to one, then we are going to transfer whatever on um, uh, D going to transfer to the output Q. If enable is zero, then it's going to maintain the previous value. Okay, so let's look at the example here. It's uh, very simple. Uh, we can see here that if enable zero. We don't care what is the value of D, we are going to maintain or we're going to store the value of Q. Okay, so basically it's a, it's a storage. So let's say for example, it's a logic one, our current state, and we want to keep this value. We can just set our enable equal to zero and it's going to maintain the output Q. Now, if we if we want to modify the, the values on the output values, then we can simply uh, put uh, enable equals to one. And if we put D zero, Okay, if we put D0, enable 1, then D is going to be transferred here, and therefore our Q equals to 1. Okay, uh, similarly, if, we, if, we, if, I, if I put uh, a 1 here, enable 1, D equals to 1, our Q is going to be equals to 1. Okay, so let's look at the example here. So enable 0, maintain, maintain, enable 1, okay, Q is going to follow D, so what is D? So D is like this, and therefore our Q is like this. Uh, zero maintain so maintain so we can see that uh, don't care don't care we don't care what happened to D because our enable is zero we are going to maintain the output Q equals to one now uh, enable equals to one here and we see that our D is this pattern therefore our Q is going to follow and we're going to get this pattern maintain and maintain okay um, so we are done with the latches and the second part here is, is the flip-flop and flip-flop requires a clock signal. So uh, a synchronous digital system uses a clock. A clock signal is distributed to all system components. All output change simultaneously when a clock pulse arrives. So for example, here we have a clock and T here, T1 is normally equal to T2. So T here is called the clock period. It's called the clock period and, and the operating or the frequency of the clock is actually 1 over Okay, so that's a clock and down there is not a clock signal. Uh, so, so some parts of the clock that we need to know. Uh, so we have the clock period T here. Uh, we have the frequency is 1 over T. This is what we need to know. Uh, the clock width, the clock width or the duty cycle, sometimes called the duty cycle. Okay, um, duty cycle in terms of percentage. So if it's half, so here it, for example it's a 50% duty cycle because half logic 1 and half in logic zero so it's called a 50 percent duty cycle okay uh, other than that uh, we also have um, the something called the rising edge and the falling edge so the rising edge is when in the clock signal we have a transition from zero to one okay transition zero to one a falling edge is a transition a clock transition okay it is a clock transition from one to zero. So if we if we see a clock signal, it's going up. Okay, for example, here here is a rising edge and here is a falling edge of the clock. Okay, and the clock signal is actually used in flip flop. It does not use in the latch and the gated latch. So let's look at uh, the master slave flip flop. So the master slave flip flop contains uh, two latches, uh, two D latch. And we can we can analyze this and see that 
what happened during the condition when the clock is high and the clock is low. So we know that the clock signal, uh, let's say we have the clock signal something like this. So we have the, the clock with a certain frequency, with a certain period. So when the clock is 1, okay, so, 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 so when the clock is 1, uh, here is going to be 0, okay, at this condition. And what happened when enable equals to 1? So um, let's say this is our D, so this will be transferred to here. <laughs> okay. Uh, at the same time, because this is 0, here will maintain. Okay. Uh, not, not transferred. Okay, it's not going to be transferred. <laughs> so the, the value of D is only transferred uh, from the master okay, during this time. Uh, now what happened when suddenly our clock signal goes down to zero? Okay, so at the, at the moment that our clock signal goes down to zero, here will be changed to zero. Here will be one. Here will not be transferred. Okay, not transferred. So this original D, which is now here, will now be transferred. Okay, will now be transferred to Q because our enable there is equals to one. Okay, and this D actually comes from the original D from previously, okay, from the previous D, not the current D. <coughs> so this one is not being transferred and this one is going to be transferred. So you can see that at one particular time, only one flip flop, uh, only one latch is going to be working in a, um, uh, this is the master slave uh, D flip flop. Okay, so let's continue here with a, a normal D flip flop. This is by far, by far, the most important or widely used, most important slash widely used. Okay, in practice, uh, people use a lot of uh, D flip flop, and it's a very simple concept uh, based on this characteristic table. But um, uh, if you are to have a program, we can say that if clock is positive. Okay, here is called the rising edge. So if we have a rising edge of the clock like this, uh, so the clock signal is going up, then our Q is simply going to be, our Q is simply going to take the value of D. Okay, so we have a rising edge of the clock, we are going to simply transfer. Um, else, if there is no positive edge of the clock, Q will maintain the value of Q. Okay, so whatever D here transfer is positive. Other than that, we are going to just maintain the previous value. So here's a one example. There are many different ways to design the gate schematic, the gate level schematic for the flip-flop. <laughs> this is one way and there are other, other ways as well. Okay, so basically that's how it works. Uh, in a D flip-flop, uh, it's very important to understand that uh, the Q output okay, uh, only changes value okay, or gets a value from the input D at only at one moment which is at the positive edge of the clock other than that it's going to maintain its previous value so we'll see some example here on what is actually the difference okay, in the timing diagram <coughs> between a D latch a positive edge and a negative edge so a negative edge here we can see is, is using a bubble Okay, here is our negative edge. Here is a positive edge, and here is our latch. Okay. <laughs> so here is our clock signal. So what happened to our? Uh, so here is our D. Okay, our D. And let's look at the uh, the latch first. So in the latch, uh, Q A. So in the latch, we can see that um, when zero is going to maintain, when it's one, it's going to follow D. Okay, so in the latch, when it's 1, it's going to follow D. So D is like this. So it's going to follow exactly the same as D. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the positive edge, okay, uh, it's only going to change at the positive edge. So here is a positive edge right there. Okay, so this is positive edge. What is our D value at the positive edge? So at this positive edge, we see that our D value is actually logic 1. Okay, so here we have positive H and D is equals to 1. Okay, at the moment that our clock is positive, our D is equals to 1. 
therefore our QB is going to be equals to 1 so here is going to be transferred all the way down okay and it's going to maintain all the way okay it's not going to look at D anymore it's going to maintain all the way until it sees the next positive edge of the clock okay and it's going to look at the value of D so what is the value of D at the positive edge of the clock okay so the, the value of D is actually 0 here so this 0 is going to be transferred down here and that's why it's going to go down and it's going to maintain all the way to the end <laughs> until it sees the next positive edge of the clock um, let's look at the negative edge trigger so negative edge trigger is actually looking at the negative side so here so at the, at the falling edge so what is our d value at the falling edge of the clock okay so initially qc here is zero it's going to maintain and it's going to check at this point okay we found a, a negative edge of the clock and and at, at the negative edge of the clock we see that our d is actually zero so it's going to transfer the zero down there <laughs> okay so here it's going to be zero Okay, so it's going to maintain all the way until it sees the next negative edge of the clock. And what is the value of D? Here it's a 1. Okay, at the negative edge of the clock. And here it's going to transfer here and it's going to go up and maintain all the way. Okay. Let's look at the next important flip flop. Okay, the second most important uh, we can say is a T flip flop. So in the T flip flop, here's our characteristic table. We see that uh, in the T flip flop, Okay, if you want to write the program, you can say that in the t-flip flop, if uh, clock is equals to this positive edge, no bubble there. Okay, when we see a positive edge, um, if p is equals to one, q is equals to q bar. Okay. Else, we say that if t equals to zero. Q is equals to Q. So what happened here is um, at the positive edge of the clock, okay, positive edge of the clock, if T equals to 1, T equals to 1, Q equals to Q bar. So Q is equals to Q bar. So here you can see in fact say it's actually Q bar here. Okay, it's a, it's a, it's a Q bar. Okay. Um, similarly, at the positive edge of the clock, if our T is 0, if our t is zero, then it's going to hold where q equals q. Okay. Um, if there is no, okay. If there is no positive edge of the clock, it's going to maintain the previous value of q. So let's look at uh, another example here, which is the the JK flip flop. So in the in the JK flip flop, we have the characteristic table here, and it's uh, a little bit longer. So in the JK flip flop. So if you want to write the program, if at the positive edge of the clock, so it's a positive edge, okay? <laughs> if we find a positive edge of the clock, so if j is 0, k is 0, okay? In the condition that uh, this is our j, k in fact, so in the condition that j is 0, k is 0, we're going to have q is q, maintain, okay? So basically no change, okay? Positive edge of the clock, no change. Uh, if k equals to 1 <laughs> this condition okay we are going to set our q is equals to 0 okay we're going to set our q is now 0 it means that we want to reset so here we say that um, <laughs> uh, k equals to 1 basically uh, we are resetting the flip flop we want to set the q equals to 0 uh, if <laughs> j1 k0 which is this condition uh, j1 k0 our Q is going to be equals to 1. So you can see uh, this is called the set condition. It's called the set condition. And finally, if both equals to 1, okay, in this condition, then uh, we are going to toggle. So Q is actually equals to Q bar. Okay? So here, here is an, in fact, Q bar. Uh, it's, it's supposed to be toggling, okay, when, when both are 1. So uh, for example here, um, let's say q, uh, q here is, 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 is initially 1 I'm going to put 1, 1 here and we have a positive edge of the clock now here is going to be 0 okay, it's going to change that, that initially if it's 1 it's going to change to 0 if it's initially 0 it's going to change to 1 okay, so let, let's have a look at the example here to understand better okay, um, so we have the clock signal here and remember 
that is going to check only on the positive edge of the clock because it's a, it's a positive edge of the clock there so at the positive edge what is our value of j and k so here is actually a 1 and 0 so 1 and 0 we can see that is going to set our q equals to 1 and it's going to maintain all the way until it sees the next positive edge of the clock now the next positive edge of the clock we see is a, is a 0 is a 1 so uh, 0 1 you can see here that 0 1 uh, is going to set our q is equal to 0 so it's going to go down and it's going to go all the way until this point okay until the next clock so in the next clock uh, we see okay it's a uh, j is 0 k is 1 and uh, the same condition as before so it's going to maintain 0 all the way until here and now we have 1 1 okay so we see that here if it's 1 1 it's going to toggle so you so it's going to go up okay from 0 it's going to go 1 going to go here okay positive check 1 1 okay toggle going to go 0 okay positive check check 1 1 okay toggle is going to go up okay so uh, just a final note here uh, before we end the chapter or the topic on the flip flop timing okay so uh, here's our clock signal and here is a flip flop input so let's say it's a, this is a D input <laughs> this is the clock and this is the Q um, uh, so, so at the moment that we apply a positive edge of the clock okay here is a, it's a, it's a rising edge of the clock and we see that our input D is equals to 1 so the output is in fact going to change after a certain time delay called TCO so after, after the TCO delay then only we have the input uh, being transferred uh, to the output Q okay so here is remember we have a DQ at the clock okay um, the okay so basically when we apply the positive it's going to take TCO okay uh, there's a certain uh, time delay okay to transfer the logic one from uh, the input D okay uh, to the output Q and this is called the TCO uh, similarly here we also have TSU and TH so TSU is um, the time that we have to hold or maintain after the clock transition uh, so, so the, the time input must be maintained before the clock transition so uh, the input here has to be maintained so when we supply a logic one it has to be maintained by TSU okay it has to be maintained by TSU else the value of one there is not going to be stored inside uh, the register of the flip clock okay and similarly here we have to hold up we have to hold the logic one for TH time so that it can transfer correctly inside our queue okay so these are the three definitions which are very very important okay the setup time of the flip flop the hold time and also the propagation delay from the clock to the output okay so that's it for the uh, topic lecture for this week and we have one more topic to cover next week which is a combination of several uh, flip flops to obtain uh, registers and counters